Hi, I'm Bryce with Fitech Fuel Injection. When you install your Ultimate LS system, you're excited to crank the key the first time and it doesn't start. You ever wonder if you missed a step? Today we're going to go over the common mistakes made with the Ultimate LS system on this week's Tech Tuesday. All right, we have a 1965 Pontiac Le Mans right here, and it's got a 5.3 liter LM7 engine out of an earlier Chevy truck. We're gonna show you how the wires hook up on it and really focus on how the coil packs hook up, the injector sub-harness hooks up, and the O2 sensors. These are the most common wires that are crossed and can cause either serious running issues or potentially even engine damage. So to make this easier, we're gonna jump over to an engine stand so you can see where all the wires hook up and show you how easy the installation really is. So here we are next to our engine stand. This is an LM7, but the 4.8 version. So it's very similar to the Pontiac engine behind us. On this setup, I wanna focus on the coil packs and the coil pack harness first. A very common mistake is not getting this harness plugged in correctly because it's easily flipped over 180 degrees. An easy way to know what coil plug goes in the front is to identify pin C. So we're on the driver's side right here and your cylinder one coil should have a purple trace wire in it. Your back cylinder, cylinder number seven, should have a red trace wire on it. So as long as your plug-ins have that corresponding on the driver's side, this connection is correct. Now on the passenger side, everything flips 180 degrees. So cylinder number two is gonna be a red trace wire. And your cylinder number eight is gonna have the purple trace wire. So the easy way to identify is purple on the driver's side, red on the passenger side. Our next connection that we'll focus on is gonna be the injector harnesses. Now on the injector sub-harness, we have no labels or anything, but you'll notice as far as driver and passenger, they're basically the exact same plug. So when you're plugging them into the main harness, you wanna look at the flag. This one's marked INJ for injector, and then D, D for driver. So this will be your driver's side plug. This other side is injector P for passenger. So that's an easy way to tell which side of the bank you're firing the injectors on. If you flip them, we're gonna be injecting fuel at the wrong time and the engine's gonna run rough. Let's also focus on how these plug in. There's pretty small pins inside of these connectors. So when you plug them in, you wanna make sure you're plugging perfectly straight. You don't wanna be jamming it in and forcing it. You may bend a pin, you may push a pin back. You can cause connection issues by forcing it. So they should plug in pretty easily for you. Now the last double plug is your oxygen sensor. This only applies for if you have the dual bank set up for your Ultimate LS. With the 500 horsepower ones, you only get the one O2 sensor plug, but it's marked driver O2. So your existing plug should go on the driver's side. If you're using the 500 horsepower kit with a single O2 sensor, you could put this in either bank. It's not that big of a deal. But when you're hooking up a dual O2 sensor setup, you'll have another harness that has passenger O2. And then it becomes very crucial that you hook up the driver's side O2 sensor to the driver's side and the passenger side O2 sensor to the passenger side. As long as you get those hooked up correctly, the system's gonna learn basically as a four cylinder over here and a four cylinder over here. And then your fueling will be correct. If you flip them, the system will try to correct the wrong bank of cylinders that you're actually fueling. Now finally, the rest of the sensors that plug in are pretty straightforward. There's only certain spots where they'll plug in and you can't cross them, so that's really nice. But I wanna focus on one last connector and that is your MAP connector. Now, if you're buying this as a standalone system, you may not have the LS3 MAP sensor as far as an easy installation spot. But I wanna emphasize, using this MAP sensor is very important. If you cut off the end and plug it into another map sensor like an existing one bar, the system's not gonna read correctly. When it comes to a map sensor, a one bar, a two bar, and a three bar sensor 
are all scaled differently. So if the computer's expecting a three bar and you plug it into a one bar sensor, the reading's gonna be completely off in the software. And as far as the computer knows, you're either under a full load and it needs to dump fuel or you're under no load even if you are and it's gonna give no additional fuel. So making sure you have the correct map reading is very important and can be done super easily on the dashboard of the handheld. So we know exactly what engine is in the Pontiac behind us, but if you're a little uncertain of what engine you have, I'm gonna show you some key points of emphasis to look at to help identify your engine. First way to identify the engine is to identify whether it's a 24 tooth or a 58 tooth reluctor input. That's gonna be the crank position sensor, which can be found at the starter on the passenger side of the engine. Now you're gonna see one of two colors. It's either gonna be gray or it's gonna be black. The black sensors are the 24 tooth reluctor inputs and the gray ones are the 58 tooth setups. So that's a simple way to identify whether you have a 24 tooth or a 58 tooth reluctor in your engine. Another movement off of that is to identify what cam input you have. On an LS1 or an early iron block, the sensor's in the back, right on the top of the engine, but all the way in the back behind the intake manifold. On an LS3, for example, or a more modern engine, the cam position sensor was moved to the front and there should be a plug-in up at the front of the engine. And sometimes there's a little pigtail that runs down the timing chain cover, which is very important. If that's not hooked up, and you're just bypassing and plugging our cam sensor connector directly into it, you may run into some issues because there is some wires that change position in the harness. If you look at this diagram, it shows you how the connectors change and how you need to switch the pins in the connector. If you have your engine and you have an existing intake manifold on it and you don't know what the ports are on the cylinder heads, here's an easy way to identify it. On the passenger side front of the cylinder head, you'll see a casting number. On this engine, the casting number is 862. You can do a quick internet search and see what an 862 cylinder head is for an LS engine, and it will help you identify. In this case, that's a cathedral port. On the Pontiac behind us, the cylinder head's marked 706. So you can search the 706 cylinder head for an LS engine, and you'll also find that's an LS1 cathedral port type intake. On certain newer engines, there's a feature called VVT on the GM motors. VVT stands for variable valve timing. If you're not sure if your engine has variable valve timing, an easy way to identify that is to look at the cam position sensor at the front of the engine. You're gonna see that there's either three or five pins inside of that connector. If it's three, the engine does not have the VVT. If it has five, then you're gonna to have to get a delete kit. Delete kits are available online from multiple sources. We recommend deleting it to be able to use the Ultimate LS kit. If you're gonna be running your Ultimate LS system with a 4L60 or 4L80 and you got the trans control package, you're gonna get a sub harness like this. This big round connector is for the transmission. This connector can be plugged in backwards if you try, but here's an easy way to identify the correct way that it plugs in. On the outside of the transmission on the passenger side is where this connector goes and on the connector itself there is a little arrow. This little arrow should be pointing outwards away from the transmission and should be facing towards you when you're plugging it in. If you go to plug it in and you have any resistance plugging the connector in, make sure that the arrow is pointing outwards otherwise you may be trying to plug it in backwards. If you plug in this connector backwards the transmission will not shift. If you wrongly identify your engine as either a 24 or 58 tooth reluctor and you input it wrong into the handheld software, the system's not gonna read the pulses correctly and the RPM will not read correctly on the handheld. Luckily, it's very simple to go back to your initial setup and switch your reluctor input signal. A common obstacle that we see a lot when swapping to an LS engine is if you assume there's a carburetor here, your throttle pull is on the driver's side. On an LS engine, that's traditionally on the passenger side. A simple way around it that we've done here is flip the throttle body upside down so the throttle cable's on the driver's side. Now with that, you gotta be a little creative with your throttle cable and route it in a way that it doesn't bend too much, but it's totally possible. And another little added benefit is there's no idle air motor on top, so it helps a little bit more with hood clearance. 
The best part about an LS engine is that it's a fuel injected ready motor. When you're hooking up an Ultimate LS system, all the connectors should connect right in and you should have an instant fire of the motor when you get it set up. If it doesn't, go over all your wiring again. Make sure things are plugged in properly, that you don't have a harness flipped upside down. Also, a really useful tool is the handheld tuner. In the tuner, there's a section called fault code. Go into the fault code section and it will display if a sensor is not reading or if it's reading incorrectly. So use these tools to help you get everything plugged in properly the first time. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Tech Tuesday. If you have any additional questions on what we've covered today, comment them down below. Also, let us know what your suggestions are for future videos.